mask I'm wearing is this. My sister gave it to me. The guy that I was with, he came home one night and then he died laughing and then I died laughing because like the panda mask even has blush on. Um, I wanted to do a video on how I got kicked out of church. I have been like, I ha okay, so this was my first time going to this church. I went on Sunday with my dad and this lady that I had met and ran into a few times at one of my favorite parks. She like lives up on the hill. And so church was good. And at the end, oh, I had lost my voice. I totally sounded like a man slash horse every time I talked, but I couldn't really talk. So the pastor said he was giving, this church is huge. And he said he's giving his book away. And obviously I love books. So I have to donate over a hundred more. I can't believe how many books I have. So. I tried to yell and I couldn't to get his attention like I wanted and so I had to stand up on my chair and he gave he threw it to someone close to him but then he told someone in the back make sure she gets one too so I got one his book is called temptation I should look at it but oh by the way his name is Jack Hibbs during the pandemic since the pandemic my dad watches him live but we had never gone to his church I've watched his live a couple of times and I really respect him because he tells the truth. And so at the end of the service, my dad's like, let's go up for prayer, which, you know, I'm used to. It's like, cool, you know, I could always use prayers. So we go up there and then I guess this guy's like the junior pastor, pastor, I think his name's Rob. He prayed for me, talked to me about, um, some questions I had and then he invited me Thursday night they were having their ignite singles meeting and I was like oh no I'm not trying to like find somebody and he's like no it's not you know necessarily what it's for um but you do have to be between the ages of 30 and 50 so I'm 42 I was able to go but my dad and the other lady they were over 60 they couldn't come my dad's 63 and the lady's like 69 or something. But, um, so I went, I went on Thursday and I just wanted to ask about masturbation because I tried to Google it and it doesn't say anything about masturbation in the Bible. So when I got there, I was kind of disappointed because they had already chose the, like I guess they had given everybody an opportunity beforehand to submit questions via electronically I don't know but they had like a bunch of questions and I was like oh my god I thought I was gonna be you know the audience gets to ask it was the pastor Jack and his wife and so I waited patiently I always pray and if the opportunity presents itself then I'll ask so the, that morning, my sister had called me, and in the morning, she made me laugh so hard. She was like, did you know your pastor's a creep? And I was like, what do you mean? And she goes, Google him. So I did. And on the first page of Google, there's an article by this lesbian girl, and she bashed him. I don't know what she's referring to, because he... he seem like it can be controversial sometimes the things he says but anyway she was a good writer and she made me laugh and so I asked him I said I rose my hand and I said excuse me I have a couple questions for you one my sister is 100% lesbian never been with a guy but she's in love with Jesus you know super Christian and celibate three years but she called me this morning and she said that, you know, your pastor's a creep. And, you know, in my head, I'm, I was like laughing so hard because her favorite pastor, pastor is Joel Olstein. And I was like, you know, he's a creep, right? And she's like, how? <laughs> she got all offended. I didn't get offended because he's not really my pastor. This Jack guy, you know, but. 
So, um, I, I watched the special he had, Joel, at the Yankee Stadium or something, and it just seemed like he was in love with the boy, or his daughter, at least. It was a little bit, like, creepy, a little bit. And she goes, yeah, I got that too. So I was like, okay, cool. She was being honest. And, you know, Joel is more motivational, whereas Jack is more, like, truth bombs, shock factor. And so um, I told him that, I, my question to Jack was, so you're telling me in the Bible it says that even if my sister does everything else right, the fact that she's waiting for God to send her a girl, that's like a sin and she's going to hell? I, you know, I really care about my sister and I want to, I'm in love with Jesus. Even though I don't call myself Christian or label myself, I want to understand what the Bible says. Even though I haven't read the Bible because they removed a bunch of books from the Bible. It's like who chose which parts of the Bi books in the Bible to keep in I guess the New Testament, but so uh, the energy in the room shifted. It's like everybody thought I was going to be controversial with this topic. And he goes, first of all, you shouldn't believe everything you read on Google. That might not even be me, which I didn't really agree with. But anyways, my sister... Uh, was molested by a family member, a female family member when she was 11. So that's all she's ever known is like female. So I, I, she's even said that she might not really be gay because what if that didn't happen to her when she was 11? What if her first sexual experience wasn't with a female? So when I said that, he was like, oh, you know, good. I'm, I'm glad your sister is coming around. But he kind of tiptoed around my question. And then my second question was about masturbation. What does the Bible say about masturbation? And you should have seen his wife's face. Again, the energy shifted. Like, who is this Jezebel? <laughs> oh my God, a scarlet letter. Big A written. <laughs> All over me. And then so the junior pastor that invited me got all uncomfortable and he told the pastor you don't have to answer that which is very disappointing to me it's like why not and then the pastor said turn off the I guess they were recording I found out later it was audio only because I was trying to find out where they're gonna post that <laughs> Facebook YouTube what the heck um and when he told them to turn off the recording, he didn't answer my question. One of the questions that he pulled happened to be about masturbation, so he chose to answer it. He turns off the recording and he says, nowhere in the Bible does it say that masturbation is a sin. However, I guess it really depends what you're thinking about. And he goes, it's really hard for me to believe, you know, as a male, that you can't, you can, you know, masturbate without thinking about anything or visualizing anything. And I said, oh, it's possible. Again, every, the energy shifted in the room. <laughs> what the heck? Because I don't think about anything. And I used to use my orgasms for a manifestation. And then I'm like, I don't need anything. Seriously, it's like trouble asking for anything sometimes. So, then, you know, I feel like I'm allowing God to make love to me. I said that and the guy that we just broke up got all uncomfortable. You're jealous of God? What the heck, Karen? That scares me. So after the service or the uh, meeting, whatever the heck you want to call it, the Q&A was done, I went to go ask the junior pastor where that recording was going to be broadcasted and then he ran away from me he was like avoiding me ignoring me I couldn't even believe it so that was disappointing but I got the answer that I wanted which is you can masturbate I guess as long as you're not thinking about anything that could possibly be perverse I don't know what that necessarily means but um, also, I cut my hair Ooh, so short, it's like I almost shaved it. I wanted to show support for all the women all around the world that are being oppressed. And then I dyed, I bleached it. So it's in the um, stages where 
I use 20 volume because it goes on my scalp, so I have to always have to do it two times. I'm probably going to do it again tomorrow because today is like carrying all these books downstairs. So uh, I've been donating my books. I've been donating a lot of clothes and then just trashing anything that is over six months old that I haven't used because I've been on like a really strict no buy since the pandemic. And you know what I've been discovering is that in this process of getting rid of 80% of my stuff, <laughs> I'm going to show you guys before how much stuff I had and then where I'm going to end up and just taking it with me. But in this process, I've realized that it's so hard and I've been avoiding it and just not even looking at it, thinking about it, whatever, for the last few months. Because first of all, it's something I want to do. It's not fun. Going through a bunch of stuff, realizing you used to be a hoarder or like low-key hoarder and also super excessive. I don't need all this stuff. Like what the heck, you know? A lot of it was gifted to me, but I purchased a lot of it myself. And so it seems like I'm mourning the death of my old self going through all this stuff. It's like, wow, she's really cute. Well, she's gone. And I don't want to be that person anymore that has like, so I have to say no to people now when they want to gift me something, unless I'm going to actually use it, if it's functional and I can use it and I see myself using it or it's something I use already, then I'll say yes. And then I was thinking like, God forbid if I passed away, whoever had to go through my stuff, whichever family member, I would hate to make them have to do, I'm so glad I did this myself because remember my first video, I was talking to you guys about the Swedish cleaning method where you organize yourself stuff in such a way that if anything happened to you, you wouldn't be a burden on your loved ones. I really feel like I will never do this again. I learned my lesson. I'm never gonna have so much stuff that if I wanna travel or move, even temporarily, I have to put it in storage. You know, thank you. I still have to let go of so much more stuff and then I realize how hard it is. It's just so hard, but I'm gonna do it. I only have not even two more days left. I don't know if you guys know that I'm moving. And, oof. oh, I didn't tell you guys a story about this guy. Let me just tell you really quick. I was followed. <laughs> And I've never been scared in my life, but I was terrified. I went to Farmer's Boy because I wanted an Oreo shake. They didn't have it. Apparently not all farm, Farmer Boy locations have the Oreo shake flavor. And so I was close to my house. And when I was coming back, this guy came. I was at a red light. He came next to me. And I remember the name on his truck. I was, it stood out to me. And then we passed some cops that had pulled over somebody because I remember on the way I saw them. And I don't know if the guy freaked out, but it, like he slowed down and turned like to go into in and out but then he didn't and he came back. And as soon as, I don't even think we passed the cops. We were still like in front of the cops. And he puts his high beams on and I went to the side to slow down and get a like, like see if he's trying to tell me something is my brake light out again and when I did that when I turned and slowed down he slowed down like he didn't want to see me and his windows were pretty tinted so I still don't know what he looks like but I was like he can't know where I live so instead of turning I pretended to go straight in the middle of the intersection I went right and then I floored it and I lost him I was having a hard time the whole time. But when he saw what I did, right after the intersection, he pulled over. You can't even pull over there and made an illegal U-turn. But he couldn't find me. So somehow I got away. That was 
a miracle. And so after that, he got scared and he moved in. We only lived together for like three weeks, not even, it was like between three to four weeks max. And I don't know if you remember, he had all these plants. They were all right here and all over. I took everything out that, so any like shelf space, whatever was his. And literally I made so much room for him, took all my stuff out of the drawers so he can put like his clothes, whatever. And we were gonna do this plant thing and everything was going well, but we kept fighting as like our egos. And I felt like I wasn't being heard which is a story of my life. I, I realized before all of this happened that my throat chakra was blocked and that's why I lost my voice. And I very much enjoyed losing my voice because I was like, I don't even wanna talk to anybody anyways. It's, what the heck is the freaking point? Nobody listens to me ever. I'm, it's like everyone's just a taker, taker, taker and I'm dumb, dumb giver. So when I was telling him that I needed rest because I was, going back to the gym after so long and you know how it is if you go back to the gym after so long especially if you're going hard you're going to be sore very very sore the first week is going to be miserable then after that you're going to start you know to see results and then you're going to like it and you're going to get addicted so yeah i i just to be fair he is great, so I don't want to badmouth him or anything. It just was also my fault. I'm, I'm learning. I mean, I have to take blame, too, you know, because I'm learning that I need to speak up, learn ways to speak up. And if someone doesn't believe me when I say, hey, my menstrual cycle on top of everything, I need rest, I'm not getting sleep, we're doing a lot with the plant business, with the gym, with the whole move, that's stressful, you know, you're moving in and all that. Um, so, so I ended up having to do that. <laughs> I ended up putting my foot down and saying, I need rest. And he's like, if you don't wanna do the plant business with me and if you don't want to do what you said which was 100 100 because he was like 50 50 and i was like no i'm giving 100 you got to give 100 that's all that, that's the only thing i want he's like then i don't want this and i was like all right because i'm not going to kill myself what the heck and then he kept crying and like it got to the point where i was just like laughing at him because i just thought it was so ridiculous and then he would start laughing which is like amazing to be able to make someone that's crying balls start laughing just from you laughing and getting them to laugh at themselves and realizing it's super unnecessary. So what I realized with the last two guys that I've been with is that if someone has a hard time letting go of their attachments to the matrix, it's really hard to be with them. Because at one point he asked me, what makes you happy? He was so worried about making money, about being successful, uber successful, you know what I mean? And when he asked me, what makes you happy? I really thought about it, you know? I pondered and contemplated for a good three minutes and I told him, God. And he goes, well, then you're lucky, you're solid then. So again, our faith wasn't the same. My, I trust God so much that I don't even trip when things don't go my way anymore because I don't even have my way. Or when things go wrong, I'm like, okay, it is what it is and I gotta, you can't cry over spilled milk, you just clean it and move on. You don't have to dwell on how did it spill, why did it spill, why do I have to clean it, blah, 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 whatever. You know, before I used to ask why me and now I say why not me, I was built for this, you know? So, yeah. This is a lonely road, you know? As soon as people find out I'm single, they try to get at me, they wanna hook up, and I just, I really don't understand, I really don't understand how people can 
settle and tolerate so much. It's really crazy. But yeah, communication is such... Because I trusted him, even though he did things that made me... Like, I shouldn't have trusted him. But it's like, you shoot yourself in the foot if you... I don't need to know if you did anything, you know karma will play out the way it's supposed to but the communication thing i've been noticing that with the men that i've been with they just shut down they go straight you know the response is distance emotional distance and then it, sometimes there's no recovering or coming back from that it's he kept asking me why are you being so kind why don't you kick me out why are you still caring about if i ate and it's like i'm a kind person you know god brought you into my life for a reason and i'm not gonna be treat i don't know i guess he's used to people treating him bad when they don't get what they want which is normally what happens to me when people don't get what they want they treat me bad which is like what he was doing too and I'm not gonna, you know, the real flex is not turning into the people that traumatize you, not becoming like them. So all the times I've been traumatized, like you guys knew these stories of all the times I've been abused my whole life and I refuse to be like those people. I really, really, it's hard, but I really try to keep kindness at the core of my being because that has been my true essence since a kid. I've always really liked helping people without them even having to ask me. And even to this day, I hold the door open for people. Yesterday morning, I went to the grocery store and I just said good morning to some lady and she tried to give me money. And I was like, no, 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 it's okay. And she goes, no, thank you so much for being cordial. And I was like, I can give you a hug. And she had a mask on, she was scared. Today is October 6th, I believe. And I've been seeing a lot of people wearing masks again. So I don't watch the news. I don't know what's going on. But apparently they're scaring everybody again. <sighs> I'm so tired. I just didn't sleep good last night. That's If I slept good, I, I, I don't care. I'm not going to. Successful people don't go off of how they feel. You still got to keep moving and not let anything distract you or bring you down. But definitely when I stay off my phone, I notice that I get a lot more done. Although Instagram is extremely addictive. I've been trying to grow on Instagram and I am certain. Excuse me. Someone pulled my bedroom up. I am certain that the algorithm is against me. And I know a lot of people think this, but I post a lot of controversial stuff. So you know how many times I've been reported? <laughs> One time my account was almost suspended. I didn't even do anything that time. People just don't like me when I get attention from people with a blue check mark. So anybody with over one or two or three million, when I go on their lives or whatever, they're like, who the heck is this chick? She only has like, I think I have 70 followers now. I was at like 10 the other day. But if you see the quality of my stuff, you'd think I'd have more followers. It's just uh, crazy. It's really crazy. So, I think my panda mask is ready to come off. The poor person is hot. I need to open up the window again. So, I what is, oh, I need to send that package to my best friend, Shane. Let me get it ready and then come back and record again. I love you guys.